I don't think you have to want to live in a tiny home or have an RV or live in a house with just one chair, one bowl, and a spork. I honestly think that minimalism is very different for everybody, but the concept of minimalism and simplifying your life can help most people not only reduce stress, but definitely save money. I know this firsthand because it has been about three years since I first came across this concept, which is not really a new concept, but the movie Minimalism by The Minimalist, and my eyes just opened. Over that three years, a lot has changed but a lot has remained the same with the ideas and the thought process, this processes that changed behind minimalism. So in today's video, I want to talk to you about where I am three years later and the three kind of categories of places that you can start to minimize your life where it might have the biggest impact or where at least it had the biggest impact for me. But if you are new here, my name is Jennifer and on this channel, I make videos all about saving money and living a simple life. I'm also documenting our journey to paying off our mortgage by the year of 2024 and ultimately being financially independent. So if any of that interests you, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. What you're seeing is people are sick of clutter. They're sick of having so much to clean. They are tired of being stretched so thin and tired of walking into their space and going, Ugh. just feeling the stress and bad energy radiate off of all of their stuff. And just the clutter that consumes their brain as well. People are getting, it's getting too much, this consumeristic culture. And I think what you're seeing is a definitely a big push towards minimalism, but then you have some people who are against it completely because they think that it's this one way. They think that it's this room with bare walls, nothing in it. And again, you don't have a spoon, a fork, or a knife. You have a spork. You know, the ones you used to get at KFC, the spork that never really actually pulled the chicken out of the chicken breast. Anyway, I digress. I think that you're seeing a big shift. So for me, minimalism made a huge difference. So I have put together kind of my biggest takeaways or tips that if you're just starting out, these are good beginner places to look at decluttering and that you may not have actually thought about before. The first one and probably the biggest is digital clutter. Digital files, pictures, emails, text, social media. Think about how much time we are giving to that little device in our hands. Maybe not so little depending upon which X level plus plus extra large phone you have, but you're giving so much time and attention to that. That is taking away from so much. I, last night actually on the way home, was driving and saw these two younger girls behind me, one driving, luckily not paying attention to her phone, but the one next to her, she was sitting there like this. The phone was glued to her head. I'm not sure she ever moved it away from her face, knew where she was going, was talking to the friend that she was with, we are living inside of this box. And this is one of the biggest places that you can make a difference in minimalism and make the biggest difference in simplifying and reducing stress in your life. So the book that set this off for me was the book called Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. And I will link it down below. I also just finished his book called Deep Work. And you can read them together or separate, you know, it doesn't matter which one you read first, but deep work is amazing. I'm reading another one of his right now called something about email. And it, I'm not getting there with it as quickly as I did with deep work. Deep work was probably, it was a great book. Digital minimalism is as well. But what digital minimalism, digital minimalism taught, told me to do, or the suggestion was to do is to wipe out all of your social media for 30 days. Take everything off your phone. Um, what I recommend doing, because what I found myself doing was logging into the, like, the, the, the website, is going in and if you're going to do this, make it purposeful. Don't tell people that you're going to do it because then you won't really figure out the real results behind it, but go in and change your password. One that you won't remember. Write the password that you change it to down and put it in a place that's hard to get to. This is just the, the thing that I had to do, believe it or not, in particular with Facebook to figure out how to get away from it. And 30 days may seem drastic, but 
what you're planning to do here is to see if you can reroute your time to choose a different hobby to when you're distracted or when you want to be distracted to maybe sit in your own thoughts. For some reason, we think that we can't be. We always need to be distracted by something. We can't just stand in line and stand there. We need to be inside of our phone. So what this is going to do is take you out cold turkey of what's going on. And what you're going to do at the end of that 30 days is evaluate which ones or if any of those social media's apps you value enough, you missed enough, and you realize you missed out and added value, actual value, not just you wanted to keep up with your high school friends from 20 years ago. That doesn't add real value. That does not deepen actual, real, tangible re relationships. Those are very shallow surface relationships. And often what you'll find is you're just scrolling through and what you're not realizing is it's having more of a negative effect on you than it is a positive. What I found was I didn't need any of it. I am no longer on any social media other than YouTube. I have, there's been a handful of times when somebody said, well, this was on Facebook or this has happened and I actually don't have any news apps on. The news is nothing but, well, it's up to your own opinion these days, but the news is just, I prefer, if I need to hear about something, it will get to me. So I don't even have news apps. I had just the local news app and it was annoying me on my phone. So I removed everything. It does hurt a bit at first, it really does. But think about, you know, 10, 15 years ago, were we this involved? Did it hurt us 10, 15 years ago not to be involved in this stuff or are we, at a lower point in our life now, intellectually, relationships that then before because we've let this consume us. I could go off on a whole other tangent on digital clutter, but this is one of the big spots where you can make a huge quick difference uh, with minimalism. You also want to go through your email. You know, if you have several emails, maybe you need to dial that down with only one email address. Go through all of your digital clutter. Go through all of your pictures. If you have so many pictures that you can't sit there and reminisce quickly or find the ones that you want quickly, maybe you should go back and delete those pictures from the aquarium. You know, the random ones that you took of the fish that looks like Nemo, but there's nobody in the picture other than Nemo. Do you really need that? What memory is that bringing back? Typically the pictures that you want to keep are maybe beautiful landscapes, fewer than those, and maybe pictures of actual people and loved ones in your life. Blurry, blurry photos or duplicate photos, get rid of them. Keep the best and get rid of the rest. The second way that I have taken minimalism and integrated it into my life to improve it is through creating minimal routines. What this has done is freed up mental clutter created a situation where I freed up time and reduced panic planning. There are a few specific routines that I've put into place. And one of those first ones is meal planning. And I've talked about this till I'm blue in the face on my channel, but I meal plan monthly. And I actually think I'm going to change something up with my meal planning. So let me know if you want a video on it. I think we've all realized that groceries the prices are continuing to rise. And what some other people have pointed out, and I've also began to see, is that not only have the prices of the groceries risen, but the amount that you're getting inside of the packaging or fruits, vegetables, whatever, is actually reducing as well. The other routine that I have put into place is budgeting. I really, before minimalism, wasn't big into it and didn't think it to be as important. But after you know embracing and, and learning more about minimalism and the wastefulness of money, I decided I wanted to know what my money was doing and where it was going and what it was up to, you know, on a Friday night <laughs> or all the time actually. And then I also declutter every day. I did a major declutter um, at the beginning of it. And I think that's probably one of the first things that you do. But after living with the concept of minimalism, you get better and better at it, just like any habit or skill. And what you will find as you go on is things like to just sneak in. They just get legs and they sneak into your house, whether or not you bring them in unknowingly or knowingly, or somebody else in your house brings them in. 
decluttering is an ongoing routine. So I actually do it daily. If I come across something that I no longer find useful, I no longer need, is worn out, has holes, doesn't fit, then it needs to go somewhere, whether it's trashed or whether it's donated. I don't need to wait for a big decluttering. And what this does is just a habit in my brain. I often just pick up something and if I, I can automatically sit there and realize that it's not for me anymore. The third overall takeaway or tip that really made a big difference was minimizing my daily decisions. So one of the biggest ones was beauty. You know, before I was watching all the YouTubers, the, you know, the makeup YouTubers and everything they recommended I need for my hair, skin, nails, I would get. I would go and get and try all these things. And not only was I being wasteful, but I was wasting money. What I decided was to finally stop and say, no, what works for me? What looks good on me? I am not those people on the other side of the camera. Well, I kind of am now, but I'm not the, the beauty guru on the other side of the camera. What works for me and what I realized works for me and what I feel most comfortable in are very few items. The only things I use on my hair are Pantene shampoo and conditioner. The only thing makeup items I wear, which I don't even wear all the time, is I pencil in my 90s thin eyebrows, um, maybe a little eyeliner, mascara, and some chapstick and I'm out the door. Um, same thing with just any kind of a beauty routine. I used to do all the masks and the oils and the uh, face lotions. And what I found is actually it was worse for my skin until I went down to two products. Um, my skin has never looked better and they're drugstore products. So all the time that I wasted and all the time I wasted, not only consuming that content um, was wasteful, but buying all this other stuff that I did, didn't need. And that obviously when I reduced the amount of things that I did in my beauty routine, I got back a lot of my day, a lot of my time. Not only putting on all that makeup, trying it, realizing you don't like it, redoing it, then taking off it in the middle of the night or end of the day, you know, you just get back a lot of time. The other part of the daily decisions for me was clothing. I, one of the things that was my biggest vice when I was spending so much money was clothing. And I would buy cheap clothing, but lots of it. Um, just because I thought that I, I always wanted something new. It's just a hobby that I had. I thought it was a hobby going shopping. So what I did was I went through my closet and that's something I still continually do. Anything that's ill-fitting, that doesn't look good on me, that I don't feel confident in, that doesn't um, you know, exude the personality or the person that I want to portray or be or who I am actually. Um, I think once you whittle down your closet, then you discover who you actually are within it and you embrace yourself more and you become more confident. I had to get over my fear of spending more money on clothes. I had this, I can't, I can't spend $50 on a pair of jeans. That's just absurd. There's no way. When I could go buy two pair of jeans at Target for that cost. Probably can't now because stuff again has gone up a lot, but back in the day, I just couldn't, I couldn't allow myself to do it. I had to get over that fear. And when I did that, I was able to buy better quality pieces that made me feel more confident that I no longer have to replace as often. So those are the three kind of big overall buckets I think somebody can start to minimize their life. Obviously the digital clutter, creating routines that simplify your life, and reducing the amount of daily decisions. If you guys have any great tips about minimizing or simplifying life for anybody who's just getting started, put those down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you back for more videos. Thank you.